Hello and welcome to Tuesday's vlog, first day back. Uh, I just want to start this one off and just say thank you to everybody who come along to the show, who come, come along and said hello. Obviously I thank you on the video for that, so I hope you enjoyed it. Um, like I mentioned, I had my own car there this time, so I couldn't do as much filming as I normally would, because obviously Chris even told us when I was away, um, just doing me bit filming and looking around, there was quite a few people showing interest in the car, and obviously when you're not there to speak to people obviously i'm showing the car because that's the whole point of a, a car show but i want to do a bit of promotion for the channel as well by having the like the, the banners kind of thing on my car and handing out a few cards it all helps uh, so yeah that was a great weekend uh, the weather is very much different today to what it has been all weekend and yesterday so well, there's not a great deal in the day what i'm going to try and do I, I keep mentioning this day is the internet's off at home in my new data package has just rolled over uh, today, so I've got my full data back, but that's the last as I'm going away in the caravan, I would say twice, a week in Berwick, and then I'm going away again. So I've got to be careful how much I use now, because that's got the last as for the rest of the, like, kind of, well, 31 days from now. So it's, the reason I'm putting it into two parts, number one, my phone won't convert over an hour in one go. It says I haven't got space, but I have, so I don't know. So there's, there is a reason for that. Plus, for uploading, I tend to find it'll upload, say, a 30 to 45 minute and then a 15 or 20 minute video is two separate better. Um, and while I'm in the garage here with internet, I can split them better. So just in case you're wondering what's the deal with the part one and part two every week now, um, it, it just works easier and it gives me more time to process it. Um, so yeah, uh, I'll show you what's in. We've got to, Obviously, I've got my Jeep. That'll be going home soon, but like I've already explained to you on last week's, there's a little weep on the oil filter. So I'm going to take the oil filter off again, fit this new type, and see what happens. Because it's really annoying, because there's no other leaks on it. So that's that. Um, we've got this Kia seed in, and this has got the little three-cylinder, well, what they class, obviously a turbo GDI. I take a gasoline direct injection. So basically, it's like a common rail system, like a diesel, which was fitted to a lot of stuff from years ago now which has all come back for emissions reasons so again these little three cylinder engines just be careful they're great if you're just using them as a normal everyday car but what i do see quite a lot of are these um kias like this getting tow bars on i think this one's got a tow bar um yeah the will tow the little trailers and stuff okay but on paper these have a lot of power don't get us wrong probably more power than you know the bigger engines but if you start pushing these things too hard, as in small tones, even just small caravans like what this kind of car would tow, just don't. Either get the diesel or get the four-cylinder one. Don't be easily led by the torque in the brake horsepower figures on any three-cylinder engine for towing. Just don't go there. Or using it for kind of heavy motorway use, doing a lot of miles. Just know they're great for town driving and stuff like that. But apart from that leave you know leave, leave well alone but as you can see this is not a bad engine because if you look how complex one of these uh, eco boosts are it's just an explosion of pipes and wires i think this looks great i mean look at how easy access that is to the uh, alternator the air con pump somewhere maybe down there at the back nice easy access to the manifold one nice just tiny little cover to deal with nice intake pipe going here so yeah obviously the turbo will be buried down the back of the engine but that's nothing what any other engine doesn't have so i would give this the thumbs up probably one of the better three cylinder turbo engines out there definitely better than the suzuki one and definitely better than the ford eco boom 100 percent um time and chains on them again so i don't believe don't 100 percent quarters i don't believe there's any kind of wet belts in the sump running oil pumps or anything like that i think it's just a straightforward chain driven so just make sure you get the oil changed regularly and fingers crossed you shouldn't see too many problems but three cylinder engines do tend to rattle on a bit to start with so don't expect to get that much of a long life out of them um but yeah if i had to have a three cylinder turbo it would probably be this and it's obviously the same company uh, kia hyundai the hyundai equivalent of this car will have the same engine in uh, so yeah thumbs up to that nice and simple and cheap to work on iridium spark plugs probably get expensive but yeah overall i think i've already had this car on the channel before not bad interiors are nice 
I really do like the interiors. I think they're really upmarket for what you would expect from one of these. It's got all the bits and bobs you want. Electric fold mirrors, cruise control, speed limiter, you name it. It's got, it's got all that, all the good stuff. So anyways, this is in for MOT and service. We've just obviously done the oil and filter on it. Um, didn't really need a big service this year because it had a lot done last year. So it's all been done. The only stupid thing with these... They've got the under tray underneath and nobody's had the common sense to cut a hole in it in the factory or have an access panel. So again, it's across the board. A lot of cars do this now, but why not just have a little hole underneath instead of having to take a whole under tray off just to get to an oil filter? It just seems to be the common way now. Um, but yeah, that's done. Ready to go. And we're just going to get on now with the what you've seen last week. I did my bit uh, video on got the little C3. And as you know, the steering on this now is sorted. All it really requires now is the tyres, like I said, three tyres and front discs and pads. And there's a bit of a knock on this corner, which I believe is a drop link. So while we've got the wheel off, we'll stick a new drop link on this side. And then this is a way for MOT. And then I have to run it back the night. But I might not get that on film because it's probably going to be late on when it goes back. I'll come back to you shortly. When I've got the wheels off, quickly show you the brakes, get the tyres done. I'm just keeping it quite short the day for the intro. Trying to keep it under 10 minutes rather than running it to 15 minutes. So I can fit a bit more in this week. Hopefully the internet will be on anyways by the end of the week. But we'll see. But I didn't know this, but supposedly, fingers crossed, a pound a day for the first two days and then eight pound a day thereafter. And I did a, a brief calculation yesterday. And I think I've got about £105 credit coming back to her. So, as far as I'm concerned, they can leave it off a few more days. <laughs> it's, it must be costing them a fortune, this. And that's every single person in our area. We'll see it. It's one of them old sayings, won't we? Until I see the money is a credit on my account, I'll then believe it. So, up to now, it's, we'll see. <laughs> so, I'll catch you when I've got the C3 on the lift and I've got the wheels off. Right, welcome back. I just thought I'd show you on the C3. The key has gone out. Um, I'll show you what I've been doing with this. I'll show you just something I've picked up outside, but I'll probably put this into maybe tomorrow's vlog or something. We've got that old uh, RAV4 over there. Quite a decent old car. It's pouring rain out here, so I'm not going to go across to it. That's in for a bit of a rattle. So, the wheels are off, and they've been away to stake four tyres. There was only one tyre worth saving, which is that one. Um, so, obviously, the back wheels are off. So I just thought I'd show you the discs and pads. But there's a few little things I want to show. Obviously, we've got the drop link, which is already off. Which goes there. It's the new genuine one, the TRW. Same as what they leave the factory with. And obviously the discs and pads. And I was just saying there, my ZX. Now what year is this? 07? My ZX is 93. And it's been a while since we've fitted uh, solid discs to a car before. Especially this new. But it's just got the solid disc, the non-vented. And I was just saying, looking on that thing there. Peugeot Partner from 96 to 15. These are probably the same discs is what's fitted to my ZX, funnily enough. Um, what I wanted to show you on this, what's, what's been seized on it is the slides, which we've managed to get off. But I want to just show you, obviously, MOT check to, to a vehicle, especially like this one, as you can see, with uh, steel wheels on and wheel trims like that. So all you can see is very, very little. In fact, you can't see anything through the wheel because between that wheel trim over those holes, you can't inspect nothing. From the back edge, you can't see nothing. So, theoretically speaking, if this passed the brake roller test, this car will be given a clean MOT and classed as safe. Because you've got to remember, as an MOT tester, you have to test as presented, and you can't assume nothing, and you're not allowed to remove covers, i.e., like I've already told you. If my Jeep, you can see the wheel there, if there was a wheel nut missing on there, it would be a fail, because you can see it. But the Astra, or like this one, with wheel trims, you can have wheel nuts missing, and it will be a straight pass, unless you, unless you can physically see them. So it's the same with this. You can only test what you can physically see. So I just wanted to show you, that's the bottom. One of the pads has come out somewhere. I've put it, I don't know where I've put it, somewhere. Um, but the one that's still in here, if you have a look there, that's the pad lining. And it's just coming out. It's completely, completely separated. That's the pad still in there. I don't know if you can see that. The metal pad is still in there, and this was just loose, which was your lining in between. And obviously that's that's how it should be, and that's come away. 
And I drove this car, you've seen us on my video when I did my bit video last week when we took it back up there. And do you know what it is? The brakes felt pretty much okay. But it just goes to show if that was to slide out or, you know, come loose, you would potentially lose your brake for a good few pumps until the piston come out. So yeah, just thought I'd show you that. And that's nothing dodgy, nothing. So next, you know, when you're getting your car MOT'd, don't always think that the car is perfect. This thing what you get when I'm buying, if I buy a car for somebody and they go, oh, well, it's got a new MOT, the car is perfect. It's not. MOT is to the minimum standards, as in to the point of that something becomes dangerous, then it fails. So a car can have a clean MOT, yet everything could be almost knackered on it, but just not to the point of being dangerous. So just thought I'd show you that one, to always remember with your brakes. Obviously, when we've got all this stripped down, the discs aren't the best. Um, like I've mentioned with that video I showed you, this car drives through a stream every day, a Ford, and you can see all the pitting on that inner side of that disc. So it's worth changing. And it's, once it's got the new tyres on, it's going for MOT. So I'll come back to you quickly, just when everything's built back up. But like I said, we've got to do these slides on here. Wait, that's part of one of them which is out. Got to clean all that up, re-grease re them. Same with the bottom one, which is tight so we'll get that out and clean it new drop link on so i'll come back to you when all that's been done yeah so i just want to show the rav obviously we've i've drove it now i can't find any clunking we've been to pick it up uh there's meant to be some kind of grating noise or clunking noise but we've checked it over fully and i i can't really we've, we've been through the only thing we can find is one little area which i'll, I'll go through here, i'll show you but we've checked all the brakes the suspension components, any play on the wheels, like the bearings. And like I've said, it drives absolutely spot on anyways. Um, but I just want to show you underneath this rav, it seems to be a lot better than most. I don't know why, but a uh, little bit here, which is to be expected. But I can't really uh, understand how this one's as good compared to normal. They're normally absolutely not good. And this is an early one, or three. But uh, the main thing we found on this... I don't know if you can just see through there, like a new, like a back, like for the sh the internal shoes. Like I've mentioned, these have discs, and then they've got a shoe inside. It's like a drum and a disc in one. So there's your disc. I don't know if you can see, and that's your drum. So somebody's been in here, and when you do work on them, like the tin sheet at the back just falls to bits, and that could have been the noise. So I've had to go clean it out, but unfortunately, other than a full strip down job, that isn't really. A way forward with these um other than a full strip down so we'll give it a tap see if we can get it any better but i personally didn't hear anything on the test drive over bump stuff like that i thought it could have been the exhaust which it isn't and that's saying something it's the original exhaust from 2003 original cat well it's a good one this um quite like the style of the interior as well so i'm going to bring this down give it another test drive and just see where we get from there with it Right, just quickly with this, I'll just show you. I want to just show you a few things on these. I think these are going to become a bit of a, not yet, maybe five years time, become quite a desirable car to get because that really are going to the scrapyard quickly with the way that they rot. I'm very surprised this on an O3, but with the diesel ones especially, I love the bonnet scoop. Or obviously they're a functional thing. If you open the bonnet, you've got the intercooler on the top of the engine. They're real hate fake stuff. But I always said. I put us off the petrol ones um, because they didn't have that. It, it, it just there's not many cars, is there? When you think about it, like for example that Mini, that Astra outside, they all look the same whether they're petrol or diesel. I just love these how the Rav fours. You without even looking at a badge, if you've got to see the bonnet scoop, you know it's a diesel. If it hasn't got a bonnet scoop, it's a petrol. I think it's the most distinctive thing ever, and I think it looks great. Let us know your opinions on it, but I just do think that a bonnet scoop on something like this, a real one, not some horrible tack, it, a genuine bonnet scoop on something like this looks spot on, really does, um, and this is like a GX spec, I like the two-tone, dark grey, silver, I think that looks nice, and then again, I mean, I'm not fully aware what exactly the GX must be, but it must be a nice spec, because it's got the full leather, nice leather, at that, and it actually smells genuinely real, for these, I don't know if it is or not, but it feels it. But even on the front seats as well, I love how, I mean, obviously this car's been used as a works car, it's like paint on the seat and stuff, but you can see the other side. They've even got it embossed in, RAV4. I've had so many lovely cars. 
I can't remember what it was. Like that, I've had like there's a few things I've said. Like, it would be nice if they just put the bit extra on them. Like that, that's nice. And I quite like all oh, this kind of like um, like talks around everything, around the speakers, around the gear shift, and also even around the centre console. I, I just think it's. I think in time it'll look quite sort of retro. At the minute, not quite. It's not quite there. But I do honestly think that these cars are going to, you know, if you can get a nice example, I like this one, if the interior was in a bit better nick, apart from the driver's seat, in fairness, it's very much saveable. I mean, even the arches aren't too bad for these. So, yeah, I just want to just add this one in because I do honestly think these are going to become a future classic, especially early ones, diesel ones, and ones that are a nice spec like this. So I'll just go over quickly to this mini... A warning light on the dashboard for brakes, uh, so it's going to need front and rear pads, as well as the sensors, but I'll, I'll get into that tomorrow. You've seen us do a couple and you know how much I dislike working on these minis, because the sensors that they have on them bury themselves like right under all the under trays, you've got to go pulling them off the inner liners, which is just completely unnecessary for a changeable item, like a set of pads, it's ridiculous. Um, so yeah, so that's what that's in for, but you know it entails... The plugging the machine in and resetting everything is just a total chew. It just, to be honest, messing on with the scanner takes as long as doing a job on some cars. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Uh, my Jeep, I'm going to bring that in. May do a quick video of the oil filter situation. Um, C3's MOT, that's done. I forgot to show you because uh, we're going that much of a hurry. Um, I'm sure I showed you the old pads when they were dropping to bits. I did, yeah. But since then, it's had the Marshall. These are great tyres. Three new Marshalls. As you can see there, discs and pads, which you'll be able to see through the the wheel just, can you? There, new front discs and pads, and obviously the drop link at this side, which you might just be able to see the grease I've put on it there, the nice new drop link. Sorry, I didn't, do you know what it is? I've been that chewed today, it's just never stopped. I apologise if I have actually showed you the new disc fitted. I just don't, I just can't remember if I recorded it. So anyways, that's going back, that's done for another year. Happy days. Uh, this key is going in for MOT now. We're having to do a really late one the day, so that'll be away late on. But I've got to run all the way over to Uffham now. So what my plan is, I'm going to quickly get my Jeep on the lift and get that oil filter off. Let it drain, clean everything up so it's nice and clean before fitting the new one and then leave it overnight and see if it leaks because this is the problem it's not much but it's annoying for on me drive it's very very minimal i think the drips here somewhere that's it there just that that it, it only that's been stood there since friday and today's tuesday and that's all it's done just that but that's just enough to mark the drive and it's really annoying it's coming from the oil filter on that little seal so for the price of a new oil filter, I'm not going to change the oil because it's, it's been done, it's probably not even done a couple of hundred mile. Um, so yeah, quickly do that and I might show you when I'm under it again and we'll see how it's fed for the three or four months or something Chris has had it. We'll see how good it looks underneath from being what our class is used every day as a working vehicle. We'll see how it's uh, fed. So I'll come back to you when I've got it on the lift. Just a quick video. I thought before I show you what I've already been on about the oil leak, I just wanted to show you underneath of the Jeep just to see how well it's actually keeping. It's like exactly like it was before it went. Obviously, it hasn't had a winter yet, but it really is in good nick, the underbody of this. Sills. So yeah, I'm pleased with the way that that's kept. So, on the oil leak, like I've mentioned, um, this is the old filter that's off, which I was never really keen on because the f it's an old Ford filter. Yes, it fits, but it's not 100%. The, the seal is very flat on it. Uh, maybe it can't take the pressure or something. I, I don't know. Uh, so like I've mentioned, I've got the proper Marley one. I've got the torch up there, if you can see it. So I've fitted that one, which has got a much different kind of seal to it. And there's a little bit of surface oil around there, but nothing which would physically drip onto the oil filter. And there's this little channel here, as you can see, just dripped on my hand. Um, the oil runs off the filter, down this channel, and then obviously that's where it was dropping on the floor. So I've got the new filter on. I'm going to put one of these lick sealers in just in case there's a whip just above it that I can't see. And as you know, I highly recommend this stuff. So 
that's as much as I can do. It's a very, very, very minor leak anyways, but it would just be nice to park it on the drive and not have to faff around with um, worrying about drips of oil. So, yeah, that's the new filter on. There's not even any point in starting it up and watching it because that's, it doesn't leak like that. It's more of a kind of two or three, three day leak. So, yeah, just thought I would put that in. So I'll catch you tomorrow. When I get to work, um, I'll catch you tomorrow on Wednesday's vlog. Hello and welcome to Wednesday's vlog. Quick uh, run through with the mini, what we've, what we've done. Front and rear pads, obviously I didn't need to record that, it, it is what it is. Simple as any other car, but the sensors on them, I did want to show you. Where they're pathetic on these, because they run the sensors up inside of the inner wheel arch liners. Why they don't just have a little join point at the end, like Mercedes and a few other brands do, is beyond me. But with these, if you don't change them, they will not reset on the computer and the car comes up saying that they're running, re wearing low and there's the front one so you know obviously you can see where it's all, all worn through but that won't zoom in on that will that zoom in or not or won't it maybe just see there takes that edge off and it wears it down as a percentage so you can see it was on that one and that's where i started wearing through they were getting quite low so they're being done you've got your front Sorry I had somebody come in there, I lost track of what I was saying. So yeah, obviously you've done the pads um, and I've reset. You, you've seen us using the scanner before. The problem being was uh, with these, you've got to go in, you've got to reset the front pads separately, rear pads, and that all goes down as a percentage on the little display when you switch them on. They normally come up like like a service. I'll just see if I can. There, like on their service, but it was coming up like brake pad warning and God knows what, and it affects the mileages. So... That's been done. And I just happened to spot this when it come in. Because obviously it was raining yesterday, as you know. And uh, how on earth? On a new car, you know. Like, you see, we're scratching all the glass. The wipers are just hanging the bits. I fail to understand how people can manage to drive. With wipers like that. So, anyways, these are like original mini fitment ones, so like along with what Toyota and Lexus use. These are your Denso hybrids, which are exactly the same, exactly the same as what you would get from the dealerships for a fraction of the price. So, if you ever do have these, what you call hybrid wipers, use these, the Denso's original equipment, fraction of the cost of what the dealers charge. And they're a nice, simple idea. You just get a screwdriver in there, flick that up, like that. Then the blade, just simply, you just pull it back, which obviously I'd show by only two hands, and then they just come off and you pop the new ones on in the reverse order. So there, stick the new wipers on, that's this one done, just needs a quick test drive. And we've got that Mazda 3 out there, which I'll show you resetting the service light. And we've got an oil filter change to do on that. Right, things have gotten busy all of a sudden. Uh, seems to always be the way when I'm expecting things to be quiet. I start doing a few jobs on my car, and then it all kicks off but that's the nature of the game business comes first my projects come second at the end of the day it's a garage what pays my bill my bills gives me a wage just want to show you this new mazda 3 and how complex new cars are becoming which is why i would probably never buy one as in outright with my own money i'd have one on tick and hand it back so we'll spin it round first up from the front you've got all the new led lights when they go wrong they are thousands of pounds then we're moving to the bottom here and as you'll see in the grill see these uh, electronic motors on the flaps at the bottom see those so when you're driving along uh, they open and close so obviously anything gets caught through there you hit anything they're all going to smash and they will cost you god knows how much so electronic motors now in grills they have been around for years i will admit on bmws and stuff like that but now it's coming down onto the general kind of average everyday cars like mazda 3 so now we have a little front end impact some dirt or a uh, rock comes through there you're gonna be knackered so you know there's big expense straight up then when i pulled this car into the garage um i thought there was something wrong with the brakes it was um and what it was, I just realised, these have got what you call fly-by wire braking. I'll just grab the torch and I'll show you. The only way I can describe it is, Chris, if you're watching, you'll know what I mean. Uh, if you have a, a Citroen with hydraulic suspension, the brake pedal feels a lot different to any other car. This is how this one feels. 
but it's nothing like what them old Citroens are. You see that massive shiny unit just past the drive shaft up there next to the heat shield? They've got what you call fly-by wire braking. So your actual brake pedal is not attached physically to what you know as a master cylinder. And, it's, and it basically you've got your servo and your master cylinder. That's gone now. The pedal is just a button, an electronic switch, which sends a signal to that brake motor up there, which I'll show you better when it comes down. And when they go wrong, I think some of the old Mercedes, like uh, of the time my ML04 round there, they dabbled a little bit with this system and that quickly went out the window. Um, but it's such a weird feeling pedal, it's like, it's like how your pedal feels when the engine isn't running, when the servo is not running. It's that sort of feel, exactly like them old Citroens where it's sort of on or off and there's not much in between. Um, I actually, I mean, you know me, I drive hundreds of different cars a month and when I was putting my foot on the brake pedal to, when I was reversing it into the garage, I actually had to look down at my feet to check I was touching the right pedal. Like, my brain didn't... That, my brain was telling us there was something not right with the pedals and I thought I was, like, maybe, like, touching the clutch or something by mistake or I thought it had a great big pedal like an uh, automatic does. It's strange, very, very strange. And not my idea. Like, you, you've got to remember when you're taking out that physical link to something, you press that pedal to stop. When you take out the physical link and you give computer com complete control, if that computer goes wrong or fails, you've lost all your braking. So you can be driving along at 70 mile an hour, press the brake, and the switch doesn't work on the pedal, and you carry on going. Yes, of course, there will have been major development in this. There will have been huge development of fail-safe A, B, C, D, E, F, G, so it never fails, but... I don't trust computers and I wouldn't want to put my life onto one. And when it's, you're dealing with your physical brake pedal now being a switch and not a physical link, no, no for me. Anyways, we've been on with this doing its first service, as you can see, looking in my face, we can switched it round. Nice new oil filter, new sump seal, all Mazda parts used. God, I haven't even looked at the bill yet. Really expensive, probably. Genuine Mazda. Oil filter with a sump seal, and this is directly from Mazda. This is what they supplied us. I just keep everything right with them. Um, so if there's any comebacks, we've got the genuine invoices from the dealerships stating we've used the parts. One thing I do like about this, nice little cover with two little screws to gain a nice access hole so we don't have to mess on removing all of this. Fantastic. Moving further along. You've got your GDF, not a DPF, a GDF. This is a petrol, a three-cylinder, I believe, a 1.5, don't quote us on that, sky-active technology thing, and you've got your electronic sensors, motors, all sorts. That's for your low-pressure EGR system, and then you've got your high-pressure EGR system, which obviously you've seen this before on the diesels, where that's a flap within the exhaust, an electronic flap, uh, that opens and closes to increase and decrease exhaust flow, exhaust pressure, so it can do a regen on the DPF. GPF even. Now, petrols have basically right, particle filters, so they do regen. So now when you're buying a petrol and you're tootling around the, the town, um, they collect up all the soot. Why? Because direct injection petrols actually produce quite a lot of soot, which obviously needs to be burnt off in the... What's known as a DPF, but a GP. It's just a petrol version of one. And I want to just show you the slap happy attitude you're getting now on these. You know, not, we all know Mazda have got a reputation for corrosion, which we do know, but you're looking back at them all. And look at this sloppy kind of work. This is only a one year old car. They've gone around the, the, the wheel well in the boot and just left all the chassis, cross members, all of these bits which rust and which are part of the MOT when they get older. No protection on nothing. Just not what you would expect when you're paying well over 20 grand for a car. And I'm not just blaming Mazda, it's all them. But all this up there left totally bare and exposed. Little bit of stuff slapped on that piece. But not doing up the back edge of it. What's the point? Same here. Little bit slapped on there and you can see where it just stops. So they've slapped it on there for some reason, but not the rest of the chassis. Covers galore, which you know will all trap water and fall to bits as they get older. But yeah, 
The braking, general braking system's fine. It's all hydraulic, just the same as a normal one. But like I say, it's controlled by an electronic motor, which I'll show you further underneath. Just want to show you a few things on these. And I'll show you under the bonnet once I bring it down. Right, so now it's at this level. I just want to give you a bit more detailed look. I don't know if this comes up the same in the camera as what it does to the eye. But you see how complex they are. There's obviously LEDs around here, along there. They move around. There's a secondary beam. There's another little dot in there. You just know they start going wrong. In years to come, when these things are, you know, 10, 15 year old. Honestly, that's why I'm saying, hang on to these things. I'm, you might think I'm mad at the minute having four cars and stuff, but hang on to stuff like this because I'm telling you, there's going to be no such thing as a cheap runabout in 10, 15 years' time. You won't be able to get a cheap runabout because you could buy a car for a grand and it would cost you two grand for a headlight. Or all you've seen all the stuff underneath. And like I say, I'm showing you all these flaps inside of here. And when these aren't working properly, they set engine management lights up. When you've got an engine management light on, you can't get an MOT. So just because you've got a flap in the, in the grill not working correctly, you won't be able to get an MOT. Speaking of that, speaking of which, I am going to criticise my own car here. As you've I've seen, I've told you the speaker uh, on this wasn't working. I removed the speaker and there's a flipping door module attached to the speaker. I've got two speakers in the boot and I can't fit them. So I had two choices, leave it disconnected or what I have done, because the speaker's gone, I've just put some old gaffer tape on, just enough to stop it from crackling because I don't tend to have the music on that loud anyway. Um, so yeah, that door card's to go back on shortly. Didn't expect that rubbish, I just expect a straight swap of a speaker. Um, and while this is on the lift, the more with electronics. So unless you actually have the ignition left on the whole time, draining the battery, uh, I've just switched it off again there. You can't work the steering, because the steering lock comes on, and you can't get it to go off. To work with the back wheels, the handbrake is on all the time, because you cannot turn the ignition off and then switch the handbrake off. And I just don't like it. I know safety reasons are safety reasons, but the cars are taking too much control over the driver. Like that. If I want the handbrake off, it leaves it off. Even the rental outside, there is a way you can switch the handbrake, you can turn, basically turn the handbrake off. I hate it, I haven't even used that phrase. Leave the handbrake off in its electronic one, but with these newer stuff, you can't. So the car is just in complete control. So, you know, if you've got it on your driveway and you just want to let it roll forward a little bit or something like that, no, you've got to go starting the engine up, doing it all that way. So, yeah, it's getting to that way now. Um, I may as well leave this running and show you what I'm referring to underneath. Well, from the top ver version of the engine. Just, it's... And as we all know, like these like Japanese kind of cars, Mazdas and stuff, they're renowned for expensive parts. And you've got to remember, when these cars aren't worth a lot of money in years to come, and all these expensive cars... Yes, there will be companies who can recondition stuff and do things cheaper. I've already mentioned to you these things here. Can you see them cameras in there? There's a camera there and here, which read the speed, the speed limit signs and stuff. They all need calibrated. But I want to show you, that down there is attached to the brake pedal, so that electric motor runs all the time. To, if, to provide the pressure to the braking system, the hydraulic braking system, to make it work normally. Obviously, it will have an ABS pump somewhere, and it might even just be all built into that. But there you go. When that thing goes bang, you are talking thousands and thousands of pounds in a huge job to fit. Then it'll need calibrated. Then it'll need programmed. Getting sad times like with new cars. And there's this unit here on the side of the alternator. I'm not even sure. I don't know if it's some kind of secondary... Uh, it's a clutch unit, I think. So I think when the alternator's not required, this clutch pulley allows the belt just to run on a, on a free-spinning um, pulley and then it engages and disengages the alternator as and when it's needed, a bit like what's on your air conditioning pump, I think. Unless it's some kind of low-voltage hybrid system, but I don't think that it is. Um, but, yeah, look at that alternator price of one of them wouldn't even like to guess so yeah just got to get the oil in this one started up and that's it pretty much done i've checked it over i just wanted to show you a few things on modern cars what is it sky active g 
who knows? But like I've said, um, they're fine now, we're not under warranty. But if you buy one of these after three years and these components start going wrong and you've got a 15 grand, maybe they'll be worth then, car with thousands of pounds worth of faults or things that go wrong and your warranty's expired, worrying times. But you just get a look down there, man. There's solenoids, high pressure fuel pump like a diesel. Um, probably some kind of vacuum pump. Again, all electronically com controlled. Another pressure solenoid. Worrying. And I'm not even going to pull the cover off. It doesn't need to come off, so I'm not. But, And that's my error. It's a four-cylinder, not a three-cylinder. I think it's a four-cylinder. I don't know. I, honestly, I'm not that clued up with brand new cars. It'll, it'll not be a very big engine. Um, but, yeah, it's um, <laughs> worrying. And I've had something interesting to show you on this Fiesta shortly when we're taking up on the lifties. I like this one. So I'll come back to you when we do that. Oh, Got the camper van in, that mini's got the brakes done, as you know, it's gone, the RAV needs test driven, and we've got this, uh, I showed you this in the other week, and what we've bought for this are the upgraded polyurethane bushes with multi-hole adjustments on them, um, they're quite expensive actually these, um, but for the custom exhaust system on that, this is what we need to do, so we'll get that one on the lift when I've moved the Jeep, so I'll get back to you when we've got this one out, that one out, and the other two in the garage. Right, so we've got the Fiesta in on the lift. You've seen it out in the yard, more or less sitting on its arse. Uh, so do you think some boy race has been at it and cut the springs or had a Lawrence kit on, even though it's a Z-Tech S, it comes lower as standard. Uh, let's have a little look. We've got a little guest in today, Olivia. Say hello. Oh, she's shy. So, perfectly fine spring here. No problem. What do you reckon's wrong with it? Why is it sitting so low? Ah. No spring. <laughs> it's obviously broken and fell out. It's the first time in a while I've had a car in with no spring. So I'm going to get this taken off at the new one. But that was a bit odd. Why uh, I wouldn't fancy have been following this and a spring just falls out the back. So yeah, just thought I'd show you that one. A bit of an unusual one. Obviously, we've got the new spring just here to fit in a new top mount, but I don't think it'll need that because uh, I thought that actually was what might have been broken. Um, so we've just got to get the transporter in, we have built the Jeep back up, get the exhaust done on that and happy days. So I'll catch you when I've done the spring on this and we've got the transporter on the lift. 